We all know that AI can write code, but can it really build real production ready software? Can it follow a professional agile workflow with a product manager, an architect, a developer, and even a QA team? Well, today I'm gonna show you how to build an entire AI agile development team that does exactly that. We're gonna go beyond simple code generation to manage the entire development process from an idea to deployment using a simple, powerful workflow called Breakthrough Method for Agile AI-driven development. We're also known as BMAD. You will see how the specialized AI agents take on different roles to brainstorm ideas, plan the architecture, code the implementation, and even test the full application. So by the end of this video, you will know how to manage your own AI team to build complex software and system using this Agile AI-driven development tool step-by-step. -step. So with that being said, if you're interested, Let's get into it. All right, so first thing first, we're gonna set up our AI coding IDE. And my choice here is CodeLM. You get only $10 per month combined with the best coding large language model in one single tool. So once we sign up for the account, you can see that there is a CodeLM here for AI Assisted Co-Editor. So we're gonna click on this, download this on our local machine. So here I'm using Mac, so I have this already set up. But once you open this, you can see that on the right, we have our code mode, which here you can see we have our chat and also the agent mode. So chat, which we can be able to ask any questions. And here on the agent mode, we can be able to make any changes by simply giving instructions to the coding agents. And what's really cool about this product is that here at the bottom, we can be able to choose whichever models for the AI models to use for the coding agents. Things like Kimi K2, Sonnet 4, Opus 4, any latest models that we have. And here we also have our chat mode, which we can be able to interact with our code LM in chat mode interface. So here you can see, we can also have the route LM. So it's gonna route our questions to a particular model based on the questions that we have. So here, for example, if I were to test by saying top MC servers for AI, it's gonna route to GPT 4.1. And here you can see it's searching the web. Here's the result we get. And here we can also create a new chat. Also look through the past conversation that we have on the left panel here. All right, so let's try with some practical example. So let's say if we were to run into an error like this in a console, npm run build, you can see we have a build error. So how do we fix this? We reference this in our code agents here, and then here we can change to different models like Sonnet 4, Opus 4, whatever, right? And here we can be able to tell or give instructions to fix it. And as a result, you can see that the build failure has completely resolved. And if you were to look at the terminal, you can see whenever we run npm run build, you can see the build has passed. And if you were to look at the chat here, you can see that it's able to fix itself and verify the changes that it made. Here you can see it's able to run npm run build and check to see if it fixed the issue. So here you can see these are the terminal sessions that it started. So for example, this session right here, you can see a run npm run build, find the fix or find an issue that it's gonna resolve that issue and run the npm run build again. Eventually we get to a point where everything's passed. And so far I have been using this coding IDE for my developments and it's been pretty promising so far. So I'll continue to use this coding IDE for the remaining of this video. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the repository for BMAT method. So BMAT basically stands for Breakthrough Method for Agile AI Driven Development. So basically you can see if we were to scroll down, it tells you exactly how to install this. So we simply just copy this command and install this based on each project that we have. So here you can see inside of our project directory, in the terminal, I'm just gonna run this command and I'm gonna say yes to proceed. And here you can see, we're gonna provide the full path to our project directory. So to get the full path, we use pwd command. And if you're wondering how I'd be able to know this command, I simply just asked in the chat in our CoLM and it's able to give you the answer or the exact command that you can run. So here I'm just gonna paste my directory. All right, so then here we're just gonna select BMAT Agile Core System. So we're gonna select this to install and update. And the other one here, we're gonna to use to get multiple files for the PRD file. And then also for architect documents, we'll be also sharded into multiple files as well. So we're gonna say yes to this as well. Now here we can also select which IDE we want to configure. So for example, we can select with Gemini Code Assist, Claw Code, Cursor, and also Client as well. Here we're just going to enter this. And here it's also asking if we want to include the pre-built web bundle for these. I'm just going to say no to that. And here we're just going to enter this. All right, so now you can see that we have everything set up. And now if I were to look at my project directories, you can see that it creates a couple of things. All right, so first thing first, you can see that it creates the BMAT core, which is the BMAT Agile system. Here includes all the details about the templates, the workflow, the task, everything. And here we also have different configurations for different IDEs that we have. For, for example, we have Claude, Klein, Cursor, Gemini, and so on. And since we're using CoLM, we can also set up the rules inside of our gear icon here. So if we were to click on the settings, you can see that here we have rules and you can see that these are the rules that it defines. And pretty much these rules are from cursor rules, 
which here you can see the files are nwiz.mdc. So CoLM here can be able to identify that these are the rules and is able to share the same rules for the cursor IDE configurations. And we can be able to use those rules inside of this IDE as well. And if we were to open this, you can see that these are rules that we have from cursor rules, which is also shared and used in this IDE. Now, before we get to the next part, let's give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, ByRover. ByRover has built a central memory layer for modern dev teams using coding agents. Now, chances are you have been in this situation. You're coding with an AI IDE like cursor or clock code, and you have spent all your time carefully describing your project Context, but the next day when you start a new session, all of the knowledge is gone and you have to waste time explaining everything from scratch or maybe you're working with your team, but all the valuable lessons from past interactions, the best practices, the bug fixes are all siloed. They aren't shared across the team. So your colleagues agents keeps making the same mistake over and over again. And you know that basic rule files like claw.md file just aren't enough for the massive code base. Or maybe you start in cursor, switch over to Gemini CLI or any other agents and none of that context carry over. But by over here solves all that. What if your AI agents can actually remember all that context permanently? With ByRover, your project knowledge is saved. Everything from high level programming concepts to specific business logics, past interactions, bug fixes, even the model's own reasoning steps. This gives your agents maximum context, enabling smarter, more accurate code as your project grows. You can think of it as a unified memory layer shared across all your favorite coding IDEs like Cursor, Claw Code, VS Code, and more. So it scales right alongside your code base. For all my fellow open source fans, ByRover just launched Cypher, an open source memory layer that you can plug directly into your IDE with zero configuration. Both of these tools are designed to make your coding agents more intelligent and genuinely useful. It's completely free to get started. So to check out the link in the description to try it out. All right, so once we set up for the installation for the IDE, here we're gonna take a look at how we can be able to use BMAT for the entire full stack agile development. Now here, all we had to do just simply follow the documentation. So first thing first, we're gonna get the bundle, save or clone this full stack team file. And here's the full stack team file that it's referencing. So basically we're just gonna save this all right, so here inside of Gemini, I basically attached the team full stack file. And here I'm just gonna ask it to follow these instructions step by step. Now here you can see it first activated the BMAT method framework. And here you can see it gives you the core commands that you can run. So also things like the agent task management commands, things like choose a different specialized agent based on a problem. And here's also the workflows. We can be able to start a specific workflow. We can also try to get a personalized workflow based on our needs. And here, if we were to scroll down, there's also a list of specialist agents that we can choose. So things like business analyst, product manager, UX experts, architect, or also even product owners, and so much more. So things like when to use them, what are their abilities. And here, if we were to scroll down, these are the available workflows that we can choose. So things like we can build things from scratch to a full stack web applications, or if you just want to build it back end first or the front end, we can also choose that. But if you have an existing project, for example, enhancing the existing full stack project with new features, modifications, and so on, we can choose the brownfield full stack. So that's what I did. I basically choose the workflow brownfield full stack project for the enhancement. So here you can see that's the command that I choose using the extra command. It starts to introduce me to a business analyst called Mary. And here you can see it start asking me some questions on what are the plan I have. And basically here I choose to implement a major enhancement with multiple features or potential architectural changes. So that's what I choose, which is number three. And here the business analyst start asking me some questions on what's the current system architecture doc or any PRD files that it can read and understand what the project is about. So basically I have attached my readme file, the PRD file, also the visual improvements on the improvements that I made recently for this project, which I basically sent to the business analyst. And here you can see is able to read the readme file for the application features and tech stack, also the structure for the project. And is also able to read the PRD file to understand the project vision, the functional requirements and the metrics. That we also have the visual improvements on what are the things that we made recently for the Kanban board applications that we made off from my last video. And then here you can see a switch towards a different specialist for product manager once it knows the business requirements. So here is gonna pass the torch to a product manager here to scope out the next set of features for the Kanban board application. And here you can see it started asking me the new set of capabilities that we're looking to add. And here you can see I basically write a detailed prompt for the features that we wanna add for this project. And I basically utilizing the AI here to write a prompt. I simply give an initial prompt 
and it's going to refine that then it's going to generate a better prompt based on the initial prompt that i have then i basically use the prompt that they gave me and then i'm going to pass it to the product manager here then it's going to read through the product requirements for the next phase then it starts to formalize a new prd file for the structure plan so first thing first is start to analyze the projects and context so it tells us about the current state of the project, also the available documentations. And then here it starts to give you the enhancement scope on things that is going to enhance for the next phase for the new features. So things like integrations with the API for Gmail. And then there's also the major feature addition for the label-based Kanban, AI summarizations, and potentially a new UI for the Kanban board. And then here's the goals for the backgrounds and context. So usually what I do here is I'll just copy this, come back to another agent. I'm just going to reference this. And here we're just gonna ask this agent to give a reviews on what this product manager creates. So here we're just gonna send this request and let it do its review. Okay, so here you can see I was using Sonnet4 here to create a feedback on the brownfield PRD file that the PM generates. So here you can see it highlights the strength and also highlights the areas to improve. And here it also gives you a recommended PRD file for the enhancement. So here, what I did here is I basically instructed to write the feedback on the brownfield PRD file analysis in a markdown file. So here I have the markdown file here. I'll accept the change. And then here, what I'll do here is I'll basically attach the feedback and ask it to give me a revision for the PRD, for the PRD file. So now it's going to regenerate the PRD file based on the feedback that we give, which is so important for this process because whenever we try to follow the agile framework development, each stage here is very critical. All right, so here you can see it gave us a revision for the requirement section on section two, and it also gave you the technical requirements and also the compatibility requirements and so on. All right, so once we confirm this, we will proceed to the map out the detail for the user experience. So we can say confirm. So now you can see it started to generate the user journeys. And I was also following the same process by copy this response and basically give it to a large language model here. And it says, yes, the mapping accurately captures the critical user flows for the email integrations and is ready for the PRD file. And here it tells us to confirm and proceed the risk assessment section. So here we're just gonna say confirm, proceed to the risk assessment. And pretty much you can see that we have AI here to generate the response, but also another AI here to review the response. So pretty much we're here to review the things that it generates and making sure that they're on the right track. So now you can see it generates the section four for the risk assessment. And we're just gonna follow the same process to pass the message here, see if there's any major enhancement that we wanna make. But eventually we'll get to the point where the orchestrator will pass the torch to different AI specialists like analysts, PM, UX, architect and eventually do product owner who will implement the task but here you can see i basically follow the same stuff that i mentioned right to use the bmat workflow pass the response to a large language model try to review the response that generates and either approve or improve things that i mentioned so eventually you can see we get to a point where bmat orchestrator try to transition from planning architecture to development and implementation phase where we have a full prd and architecture created. So here you can see, I basically led it to create the full PRD and architecture spec based on the conversation that we have. And here, because I'm using Gemini, it's gonna create a Google doc based on the architecture. So here I click on the file and I click on download for the markdown file specifically so that I can use that in the project repo. And same thing for the PRD file here, I will follow the same process to download this and save that in our project directory. So here you can see I basically put the architecture.md file and also the PRD file inside of the docs folder so that we can be able to reference this whenever we try to make the implementation plan. Here you can see the first thing first we're gonna do is we're gonna use the product owner here to share the PRD file and also the architecture file into the PRD folder and also the architecture folder. So it's gonna read through the architecture and the PRD and shard it into different sections. And here you can see we're using the technical product owner here to review the request and shard those different things. So here we're just gonna accept the changes. All right, so after we save all that, then what we can do is we can activate the Scrum Master Agent. It's going to create the story or the epics for each task it's gonna do. So here you can see there's SM, that's short for Scrum Master Agent. So we're gonna use that. And here we're just going to use that command. And inside of this, there's a command called draft, which will creating a story for the task that needs to perform. So here I'm just gonna use the draft command 
and to do this. All right, so now you can see that the Scrum Master here, Bob and Sam, try to draft a story based on the Sharda PRD and architecture documents that we have. And here you can see it's gonna follow the create nest story guideline on how to create a story. First, it's gonna look for a folder called story, which we don't have it. So it's gonna create that story folder, which is this one right here. And then here you can see, first thing it's gonna do is to gather the story requirements and the context, things like the architecture context, it's gonna look through these. And it also gonna verify the project structure, the story template, full context. Once we have the full context here, uh, we're gonna create a story. So first it's going to give you a draft on what the story looked like. So we're gonna first create the Gmail account, right? So connect the Gmail account for user. So if you're a user, you wanna connect my Gmail account with secure OAuth flow. So that application can be able to access the emails and labels, right? So that's gonna be the first task and it gives you the acceptance criteria and also tasks and also subtasks related to that story. So once I'm satisfied with what they uh, provided me, I can then be able to say confirm. And here you can see it start to create the story definitions based on that. So if we were to look at the story, you can see that it creates a new file instead of that folder. And here you can see we can be able to view the story in the markdown file. So that's gonna be connect Gmail account, which currently in draft mode, but you can see that these are the requirements, and this is the task breakdown for each of those tasks. So even though connecting Gmail account seems like just a button for the OAuth connections, but it breaks down to multiple steps for its job completion. Things like setting up the NestJS auth modules, implement the secure token storage, create a TRPC authentication router, implement the air handling validations, adding the database migrations, testings, and validations. So there's so many steps going into this to make this feature into a very detailed plan, which we can see here. All right, so then once we have the plan for the story, then it's time for us to use dev here to create our task, right? So to implement the task. So here, we're just gonna use dev here, the MVC. And if you were to run this, just like how any developer starts to do the implementation, it's gonna look through the tech stack, understand the project first, which you can see, these are the technology that I use. And here you can see, we can start to assign a task for it to start to perform. So here, I'm just going to do 1.1, I'm going to assign this connect Gmail account task and it's going to start to do the first one. Before we start doing it, we have to mark the current status for a story from draft to approve. So we have to prove the task before we start to do this. So here I'm just going to prove this and here we're just going to say it is approved. And now I start to update the story status, begin the implementation. Awesome. So if you have been watching this far, I really appreciate it. It really takes a lot of effort to edit this video and also making this far. But so far, you can see that I finished the entire story 1.1 for connecting the Gmail account. And pretty much you can see it completes all the tasks for the story 1.1. And here, if you want to go back to the story, you can see that currently the status is ready for review. So now what we can do is we can be able to use QA agent here to verify the changes that it made. So here we're just going to use QA.mdc file. And here we're just going to let it to review and validate the changes that it made for 1.1 connecting Gmail account.md file. So we're just going to let it review this and validate its work. Awesome. So now you can see that it changed from ready for review to done. Basically what it done here is refactor some code and making sure to validate the changes. But pretty much you can see that we can simply use the PO here, product owner or scrum master here to create a story and use dev agent here to do the implementations and use QA to validate its work. And we can repeat that process until the project is fully finished. So that's pretty much the entire workflow for using BMAT. And be sure to check out the repository for the breakthrough method for agile AI driven development for more details. So if you found value this video please make sure to like this video consider subscribe for more content like this but with that being said i will see you in the next video